Hello friends, it is Reverend Casey Orr, one of the pastors at Brentwood United Methodist Church, joining you from my back porch today, and I am really thankful and blessed to be with you. Um, this time that we have shared the last few weeks in prayer, the last few Wednesdays have become uh, very life-giving for me, and uh, I just give so much thanks that you have been willing and open to do this with me. And um, there's a lot of ways in which y'all have become my prayer partners, and even though I don't necessarily know who you are, I feel very connected to you and um, a great deal of comfort knowing that you're out there and that you are doing this work with me and alongside me. And um, and so I, I do, I give so much thanks for you. And um, because I feel connected to you, I did want to um, just kind of confess a little bit that in the last few days, I have really had a, um, a growing feeling that I just don't have to have the right words <laughs> and that I don't. And so um, I, I don't know exactly what to say at any given moment to, to make this better or to bring comfort, and I do try. I try um, both for myself and for my family and for um, you, the church, and we're kind of all figuring this, out, this stuff out together in kind of uncharted territory. So um, kind of, I've kind of resigned a little bit to, um, to silence, and I have, I, I have found that the, the prayers of silence have actually been really, really comforting for me. Um, I, I I read an article uh, by someone writing about this the experience of this pandemic, and just he, his observation was that um, prayers of lament and prayers of intercession and prayers of silence are seeing um, almost like a, a resurrection in the church right now um, because it's the language that we have left. The language we have left is prayers of lament and grief and uncertainty and in some places doubt. Um, and the language we have left is intercession, which is just desperately laying before God the needs of our selves and our people and our community and our world. And, and that's really the work that we've done here. And then prayers of silence. And that's the prayer that has just really felt um, just so good for me as a extrovert to someone who's just always going and talking and doing it has been very healing and good for me to just be silent um, to feel my breath to remember that God is closer to me than the air that I breathe and to be comforted by that closeness and just be um, so I I'm keeping this shorter today because I just, we've been interceding for people that are on the front lines, for our essential employees, for the people we know who are sick, for people who are searching for um, a vaccine and doing research, and our world leaders. We have been praying the prayers that we will all continue to pray and all should continue to pray. Um, but I just wanted to offer a prayer for you today. Um, you may not have been named a frontline worker, an essential employee. Um, you may have not um, yet had a diagnosis or had anyone in your family with one, but you are going through this. Um, you have known some degree of grief in this. There has been some loss um, that you have suffered, and it could be as simple as the comfort of routine. Um, it could be spring sports, it could be graduation ceremonies, it could be benchmarks and milestones and anniversaries and weddings. There is loss and there is grief um, beyond the, this virus and beyond, um, beyond the, the obvious loss and uh, fear before us. And so, um, you know, jobs are suffering and, uh, and families are suffering and individuals who just for those of you who just live at home and are just lonely, um, there's suffering in, the, in this that doesn't get all the press. And so um, I just wanted to offer a prayer for you. And I'm going to close. Um, this may feel a little strange to you, but I'm going to close with um, the prayer of consecration for the home. Because what I have noticed um, more and more is that we are finding ways to make our homes a sanctuary. And um, this is a liturgy that we'll do, a pastor enters your, your new home, and we can um, do this whole service of blessing for your home that God would be utterly present and dwell in it and lead you or your family um, in faithfulness. And so um, 
I just, as after I pray for you, I'm going to offer this as, um, as a blessing, not just for you, but also um, for your home that is becoming your sanctuary and, and kind of becoming your, your place for church. So um, let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, you are good and you are faithful. And we are thankful that you are God and so that we don't have to be. I lay before you all of my friends, every person praying with me right now. I do not know all their needs. I do not know all their circumstances or all their suffering or all their grief or all their fear. But God, I give it to you. You know all of it. You see all of it. You are stepping into all of it. God, I'm calling on you to bring peace to all of it. For those who grieve a loss of health, a loss of life, God, bring peace, bring comfort. For all those who are suffering the loss of job or financial security, God, for those who are suffering the loss of experiences and celebrations and earned graduations and and days at school for all of those losses that we are grieving God bring peace and bring hope that my brothers and sisters that my siblings would know that you are with them that you are present that you see their pain, that you grieve with them, God, that you know them. And God, our minds are racing. Their minds are racing all the time with information and questions and data and predictions. And so, God, bring some quiet to the cluttered minds. Bring some peace to the worried minds. And God, we're just calling on you to step into every pain, to just step in and show up and to be present and to be known in every pain. Show up for every person who is worried or scared, for every person who is hungry, for every person here, God, who is addicted, who is abused, who is lonely, For every person, God, for every person who is battling mental illness alone, for every person who feels overwhelmed raising their kids in a different way and in a different world, for every child, God, who can't make sense of the world that is changing around them, for every family that is feeling strained financially, for every person, God, For every person, I ask for your abundant peace and hope and love to show up and stand with them, that you will go ahead of them into every space and walk up behind them, that you will stand on either side of them, that you'll be the ground beneath them and the air around them, God, that you would be the air that they breathe. God, I ask for your blessing on each person, and I ask for your blessing on each home now. Eternal God, bless this home. Let your love rest upon it, and your promised presence be manifested in it. May the members of this household grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Teach them to love as you have loved us, and help us all to live in the peace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Help us all to live in the peace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, this Holy Week, I hope that you will find yourself living in the perfect peace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, even when chaos spins and runs wild around you at the core of who you are. You are God's beloved, and God is at home with you. Amen.